Professor Daryl Hamamoto joins us. Thank you so much. I wanted to air that just to break down what you're talking about. I'm going from memory. I think the first time you visited with us was maybe six months ago. And you were, you were predicting they were trying to start a massive new racial division along every line as their social engineering program goes into high gear. That has indeed happened, Professor, as you predicted it. Uh, one of the top experts on this type of social engineering. Break down what you currently think is going on. Well, first, let me address that that uh, clip that you just aired. Um, for me, the way I look at it, this is a, a living example of the woman who's the product, most likely, of multi generational state managed welfareism, which uh, upper middle class and middle class and professional blacks in the uh, professions and the service industry manage as a comprador class. Uh, this is what you see on uh, Fox News and CNN and, and Individuals going on talking about how uh, your children belong to the state versus a recent immigrant from Africa, south of the Sahara, whose family does not have a history of welfareism, who are entrepreneurs and are interested in only uh, earning a livelihood for their families. Uh, but perhaps a better representation of sentiment amongst the black underclass is a very poignant encounter between uh, Joel Gilbert, the director, and his new uh, DVD, his documentary, I think it's called A Place Called Utopia, where he goes into a Detroit neighborhood and interviews uh, welfare recipients, so-called welfare, because it's not really welfare. It's uh, modern um, neo-plantation slavery. And uh, he pulls him, he's canvassing it, he's, getting, he's trying to get their, their uh, sentiments, their ideas about what it's like. And it's quite impressive, the, the sense of um, not just struggle, but resistance to this, this system that's keeping them down. They're, aware, they're dimly aware of it, and they don't like it. They want off of it. They want to contribute. They want to work. They want to be productive. And that's, that's innate to all humanity. We want to produce. We want to reproduce. We want to extend ourselves as a species into the future. And work is a linchpin of that very idea of civilization. And that's been stripped of us here in America systematically over the years and it's accelerating. And the bad news, it's now the middle class, including middle class professionals, are the next uh, group to fall. And that's the Agenda 21 globalist plan on record. I want you to break down why the ruling system has decided to go to this. They've got the robots coming out to replace us, even the military to be replaced. Men aren't even going to be able to fight anymore, even though there's obvious cultural problems with war. That is still an instinct that has a proper place. That's to be removed. Women can't be feminine anymore. They really want to homogenize. They claim they want sexual liberation and freedom, but really the end game in my view, is to actually end our sexual natures and actually end our diversity. Uh, it's an anti-human movement. It's going to be a monoculture, mono-government, mono-sexuality, mono-everything. It's going to be synthesized into uh, the, the type of utopian equality that uh, your uh, Huxley-type people have been envisioning for uh, close to 100 years now. But... Uh, in thinking about some of your earlier comments in today's program, including uh, pension bust-outs and all that, I more and more understand uh, that places like the University of California are really uh, the microcosm of this, this, this plan. It's a microcosm of the new world order, if you will, that will be imposing this regime. And it's in, uh, in an advanced stage of imposing this regime of GMOs, which are affecting our our intellect, our reproductive capacity, uh, bringing in the borderless economy, so-called, sin fronteras, right? The into nationhood, the international sovereignty, um, the genderless society, and then very importantly, uh, ethnic balkanization. So the, the question is, uh, these ideas, these uh, pieces of social, political, economic, and cultural engineering don't come out of nowhere. They have a, uh, a genesis. They have a point of origin, and one of the main points of origin is the University of California. Most of these agenda items that are being implemented by the quote-unquote new world order uh, are funded by the foundations. I have been a recipient of these foundation grants, 
And this is what they, uh, the people who print the money, uh, including private family foundations, they go in there and they, they set an agenda by doling out money in, a, in specific areas, in specific areas only. Uh, you notice that the Soros Foundation or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, they do not fund initiatives that deal with uh, neighborhood entrepreneurialism, immigrant business entrepreneurialism, or anything that has to do with the free market or any other aspects of a free and healthy society. Anything decentralized, they are against it. And when you look at the plan, they all say it's liberal, classical American liberalism. But it's the opposite of liberalism. It is a Borg hive post-human <laughs> system. It's post-human, it's transhuman, and it's, uh, I guess the best uh, image is that it's, uh, it's a molester that's handing you the candy. You know, it's quite seductive. Someone like Gruber, of course, uh, is motivated by status. He was the, the kid in junior high school who had his gym trunks pulled down, and he spent the rest of his life trying to pay back uh, all these bullies. And that's really endemic to academia. What you're seeing is guru, uh, guruismo, I call it. And it's all these very, very little people who happen to be uh, somewhat smart and they have credentials. And uh, they're, uh, well, I don't know if I can psychoanalyze, but they're paying back to society, but they're also getting the rewards uh, and their recognition and the accolades um, by these uh, illusory well, yeah. sure, I watched a bunch of those videos in full, not just the clips we played. And he mm -hmm. would be there teaching professors and PhD students how to lie and how the world really works. So I guess you get a PhD now, according to him, to learn the inside baseball of pure BS. And whereas that always went on from what I've seen in some special PhDs in the last 100 years in this country, in England and Germany, it wasn't mm -hmm. like they'd get on C-SPAN and brag about it. Uh, so it does show really the arrogance the arrogance of how stupid they think we are. It's arrogance, and uh, I was listening to one of your earlier interviews this week. I forgot who the guest was, but he uh, referred to it as a narcissism, a lot of these uh, high-ranking military. That's Dr. It's Steve Pachenik, yeah. Dr. Steve Pachenik, great, great mind, great intelligence, and great analyst, and uh, I, I really enjoy listening to him. Uh, his fiction's not so great. <laughs> but I like him as a uh, <laughs> political uh, analyst. I, you know, I read everything. I check check into all, all your guests. But yes, uh, it's endemic to all the institutions. This is the maybe the outgrowth uh, of the me generation, the narcissistic generation of the 1960s, which was also a psyop, which was also a product of culture engineering. We're seeing this. We have to going into the next. Uh, Year 2015, uh, learn a bit of humility and uh, reject hubris because uh, universally and uh, through time, uh, the poets, the writers have warned us in so many different ways that this, this is what happens to individuals like Gruber. And he's, he's just emblematic of a large number and growing numbers of, of people, even people of the underclass who, are in time, who feel that they're entitled to have a free bottle of water. Um, so we have to, uh, I think, to, uh, look very deeply in our, into our souls over the holidays and um, see what we can do to help inspire young people. Um, for example, I'm, a, I'm an educator and I'm trying to teach these values. Fortunately, uh, a lot of my students are the children of immigrants, of refugees. They understand the work ethic. They understand the sacrifices that their parents are making for them. And they understand through their parents the value of enterprise, family, and all really basic core American So values. do they understand how the social engineers are trying to co-op them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I warn them not to fall into the clutches of the university curricular establishment and uh, student services, which has taken that energy, taken that vitality, that youth, that idealism, warping it, twisting it, and misdirecting it and smashing it with the end game of destroying their spirit and their soul. So they, too, will enter this new, larger, uh, controlled welfare system. This is what's going on, uh, I think, nationally, talking to different colleagues. That's right. Um, young people are really, really being assaulted, including their finances, student debt. Uh, it's 
pretty common now and even corporate media that the amount of student debt is much much worse and higher and, and much more uh, will be more devastating and they're going to bankrupt the education when they're done with the bubble and then nationalize it fully just like they're going to bankrupt the pensions then nationalize it but it's not even nationalized it's private interest we're being conquered and the minute people realize that it's game over. Now, obviously, the Republican Party's full of a bunch of crooks at the top, but, but this major political realignment, now Boehner is ignoring all of it. Uh, they're going to go with the open border. They're going to go with the banker bailouts. They're going to sign on to derivative bailouts. Just, just more, more, more. But politically, they did send a bunch of new people there uh, who are trying to fight against that, some of them. But I think the message, even though imperfect, shows there is an awakening happening. There's a mass awakening, even uh, large numbers and growing numbers of uh, self-satisfied professors who live in college towns and think they're immune from the currents of uh, economic decline and think that they really believe that race, ethnicity, and gender are the, is the end all and be all of understanding. And, and it only explains a really, really small part of, of uh, the problems that we're facing. So what I have done in order to uh, get them into the tent, so to speak, is to bring to their attention that uh, their security is an illusion. Their retirement, their pension, the UC uh, investment fund has been eyed hungrily by the wolves of Wall Street for many years now. And they're just waiting for an opportune time to go in there for the kill. They're kind of circling the prey right now. They're taking uh, their pulse. But once I make my colleagues aware that this is their strategy, and they have Janet Napolitano in place there, and they've got the MRAPs and the militarized campuses there in case there's any sort of dissent, and they have the students bought off in their little ethnic identity politics uh, going on. They got them nicely balkanized and segregated like the old city of Rome. Precisely. We have all the different uh, factions and perpetual tension. And they bring in um, presidents or chancellors such as Linda Katehi, who's a, a Greek national. I don't know if she's even a U.S. citizen, who, according to my research, and this is this is how, how you attack them. You do your homework, you find the biography. It's very easy. It's open source. And she comes from... Um, um, a, a network, an international network to um, nationalize and socialize and globalize institutions of higher education. Of course. Of course, absolutely. And she's one of the, she was a, one of the leading consultants for the destruction of the higher education system in Greece. Yep. And that is uh, coterminous with, with the destruction of the larger Greek economy. They go hand in hand. Well, notice so, how they use mainstream media. This is a formulae to, to attack and, and dumb people down, but then that discredits it. Then they just get rid of it entirely and have nothing but direct government pronouncements. This is the plan. The people that sell out to it within 20, 30 years end up being betrayed. And now it's compressing where it's happening quicker and quicker. That's right. Individuals like uh, Linda Katehi and her underlings and Chip Janet Napolitano and even Professor Gruber, they think that they cannot run the history train, but they won't be able to. They'll be uh, pulled out beneath it, uh, just like the rest of us, perhaps a little bit later down the line. It really but is again, crazy. I mean, I mean, Congress thought they could turn the NSA loose to spy on everybody and that they wouldn't be spied on and blackmailed by it. And now we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have information and and uh, data, and uh, you know, Rupert Murdoch with, uh, in Britain is involved in the hacking scandal. Even the royals have all most of their personal information in the database for blackmail and control. Exactly, and, uh, and we see all these pedophile scandals coming out now to force to say. England to go into the EU. Uh, this is really a diabolical plan. I don't know how the couple thousand people. Uh, even the Kissinger Group says it's less than 6,000 people that manage it, uh, only a few dozen families that run it. They have created a monster to dominate us that will be the monster that undoubtedly destroys them. Professor, stay with us. We'll be right back on the other side. I want to take some phone calls for you, but also give you the floor to cover all the hot topics that I know you're covering and what you're telling your students. Professor Daryl Hamamoto from UC California uh, is joining us. We'll give the number out when we come back. Stay with us. I want to open the phones up for Professor, who joins us right now, but I want to give him some time, Professor Daryl Hamamoto, 
to get into any other big points he wants to make here today, to talk about any repercussions he's had. Uh, I know they've criticized him before for speaking out uh, about how they're trying to create a Hispanic racial block in this country for social engineering purposes and a permanent underclass because they don't want folks to learn English. It's the world language. They would be upwardly mobile. They want to keep them in their little barrios where the El Jefes can control them. Just, just as we see a permanent underclass in Mexico, uh, here's the headline today, Mexico's season of scandal and violence as it descends into hell, business week. <laughs> How is that our fault and why should we merge with that? We should try to reform it. But our system wants to go to that model instead of having this model because we're run by crooks by and large. Uh, so the toll-free number to join us with your quick comment or question for the professor is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Your comment, your question for Professor Daryl Hamamoto, 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, your host. The news websites are Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. The nightly news site is PrisonPlanet.tv. I've been around 20 years now. It's now 20 years on air plus. We're into our 20 plus years. So, it's 20, so we're into the 21st year to be technical. But 20 years on air. And we've had for about 15 years PrisonPlanet.tv. All my films, the nightly news, the daily radio show, commercial video podcast, a bunch of books, other videos. It's usually $54 a year. It's now $29.95 or roughly half off. Uh, a, a huge deal. That's two fifty a month, and you can share it with twenty people. So a great way uh, to get your Christmas shopping done. Get twenty gifts for uh, twenty nine ninety five, or get them five ninety five one month membership and share that with up to twenty people. Uh, and of course, uh, your signing up helps fund the operation as well. So thank you all for your support. PrisonPlanet.tv. We're running a bunch of specials today. As we self-fund, we're having an X2 sale. We basically sold out of that, but just got another limited supply in the last of the year of the Super X2 Deep Earth Crystal Source um, Iodine that's done so much for myself. You've heard the rave reviews. First ever sale on X2 where it's by itself. Our most popular supplement, 17% off, and free shipping only on X2 throughout the rest of the week until the 17th. That's the last day we can guarantee you'll get it before Christmas. Was twenty nine ninety nine. Now it's twenty four ninety nine. That's five dollars off and free shipping. That's another five dollar value, roughly. With uh, shipping, you would have paid thirty eight dollars. Now you're paying twenty four ninety five and no shipping. Very limited time sale. Only through next Monday. Order now. Get it before Christmas. And it also makes a great Christmas present. Infowarslife.com or eight eight eight. Two five three three one three nine. We're also running specials on Super Detox Special, Fluoride Shield, and X2. Forty six percent off Bio Defense Pack, Survival Shield X2, and Lung Cleanse. Uh, that's now fifty eight percent off Infowars Life Challenge, Super Male, Super uh, Survival Shield. Uh, Forty two percent off. All available Infowarslife.com or eight 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 two five three three one three nine. All right, Professor, I'm going to stop ranting here. I want to give you the floor for seven, eight minutes to talk about whatever you think's front and center instead of me asking the questions, and then we're going to take some calls. Great. First, Alex, uh, congratulations on your 20 years of broadcasting. Your Thank work, you. uh, the contributions of your fine guests, your, your reportage team uh, has directly influenced and informed not just my lectures, which, of course, uh, has reached any number of students by now, but also my scholarship. There's a book, a new book of mine that's in the mail to you that uh, explicitly acknowledges your contribution to my own uh, intellectual development. Well, thank and, you. I'm honored. I can't wait to maybe carry the book and obviously have you oh, on about it once I've read it. Absolutely. And also, just as sort of a uh, experiment, 10, uh, 10 minutes prior to uh, having this conversation with you, I took some uh, Secret 12, it's, a, it's basically a liquid B12 vitamins, put it uh, sublingually. And I take this right before the lectures because uh, my goal is to be as uh, fluid and slick as uh, Joel Osteen, <laughs> one of our favorite uh, glitter bug preachers for the international <laughs> audience. <laughs> well, you're a sweetheart for plugging it. We really are proud of Secret 12. Thank you so much, brother. It's great. Thank you. Well, thank you. It, it, it does work. It's, uh, it does something to the synapses. 
Well, thank you. So, I mean, uh, I mean, I've asked so many questions here, but front and center, what are you yes. most focused on right now? Well, you you uh, alluded earlier to some of the uh, the trials and tribulations that I've experienced been experiencing at the University of California. Uh, it's been almost a, not complete, but almost a complete reversal of fortune since that time. And the reason for that, again, it goes back to the power of information and analysis and the power of the pen. Because my book came out and everything that I've been uh, talking about and teaching in, at the uh, classroom level is now codified three-dimensionally in a book. Uh, also, a colleague of mine who's been uh, harassed uh, con continuously, and uh, just to show you the, the viciousness of the university system, she uh, was declared clinically dead due to a, a massive uh, health crisis, which I won't go into detail. And she published a path-breaking uh, law school journal article, which, by the way, if any of your listeners or viewers uh, internationally or in the U.S., would like a copy of that journal article, have them email me and I'll send them a PDF of it. It's a great article because it combines her own tribulations as a woman, as a female, as a scholar who's trying to forge new paths in academic and social cultural analysis, who was relentlessly per persecuted by her own department, who, by the way, are also Asian American. So this idea of uh, uniform white oppression is really, 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 <laughs> it's a cliche. It's become a cliche, and it's not really completely uh, accurate anymore. We have to get beyond that. Yeah, gangs of humans oppress other humans, period. Absolutely. And, and in yesterday's concluding lecture, uh, uh, I got a box of chocolates from and a card from an appreciative student. But at yesterday's lecture, I pointed out that Mao Zedong, who was, of course, as you know, a Yale, Yale in China, and he was uh, cultivated by the OSS. You've spoken to that many, many times in this show. And that information is available in um, mainstream publications, histories. Uh, I cited the fact that uh, he's Han Chinese, and he was responsible for the death of uh, upwards of 80 million fellow Han, Han Chinese. So where does the race and ethnicity critique uh, fit into that model? It doesn't really explain it. it the race, ethnicity, gender critique does not explain the economic uh, meltdown that we're experiencing currently. And I think, and I'm working on this, this is speculative, but I think that the diversion of energy, intellectual, scholarly, and student energy from the real important monumental issues of our time has itself been engineered. It seems like the foundations are pouring tons and tons of money on race, ethnicity, and gender studies to the exclusion of other modes of analysis. And that comes out of the elite institutions so that people like Professor Gruber can do his dirty work in the dark. This is what's going on here. And same with the humanities. Again, speculative, but the reason why students are dropping out of the humanities in droves is because there's something called the theory scare that took hold in academia in 1970s. And I think I alluded to this in an earlier conversation with you. Instead of reading the great classics, Dostoevsky, which I'm reading again now as an adult, it has much more impact on me as a, as a grown-up person. Uh, instead of reading these classics, they were just engaging in uh, literally fraudulent um, uh, high theoretical philosophical screeds by people like Paul Dumont. They were people that were imported primarily from France. And I think that was a psyops. I, if, if, if any uh, enterprising PhD student wants to do a forensic analysis of it, it was sort of like the 1960s when all the LSD and the peace and love and the fake counterculture was brought in by people like Stuart Brand and uh, Timothy Leary. Uh, once that uh, glow started to wear off, uh, the humanities, which traditionally has been the source of dissent and uh, incisive uh, speculative thinkers uh, with artistic skills that can help humanity progress forward. They brought all these uh, foreign intellectuals like Jacques Derrida and all these people. They're still studying in the English departments. Now, if they started studying the humanities, the Renaissance, classical Greek, Roman societies, Sumerian, Babylonian, from a new world order perspective, looking at some of the occultic elements that underlie these different cultures, I think they would have students hanging off the rafters in humanities courses. They're bored. Students are not buying it anymore. They're sick of it. The, the race, ethnicity, gender model has been in place for 40 years. It's been funded by the Ford Foundation. And by the way, there are academic books coming out right now, currently, 
that are tracing institutionally how how entities like the Ford Foundation have hijacked academic discourse, scholarly production uh, at the university. Well, sure, so, and Eisenhower in his farewell address warned of that, not just the military industrial complex. He talked about an academic um, elite in intellectual circles creating with federal funding a unified system because they are worried about classical liberalism, Thomas Jefferson liberalism. Absolutely. They're scared to death of it. So they create mainly like a new cult of it where, A, either men only sit around and talk about sports, which is its own mindless diversion, or let's talk about race and let's talk about uh, sexual stuff and let's talk about, you know, how women, have, instead of just living and actually being liberal and free and open and, and being tolerant, Instead, it's you must adopt the one thing we're pushing, and then we learn it wasn't about tolerance at all. It was about getting in the mode of following orders, and that it's actually a great uh, tyranny that we're facing. It's a form of uh, control, political economic control through, through cultural uh, indoctrination. And uh, unfortunately, the university uh, has been transformed into the side of this, this uh, indoctrination. Well, I know why your students are sick of it, because when I hear it, when I walk in and people are watching ESPN and they start wanting me to talk about it, I just, I don't even get mad at them, I just leave. Or whenever people sit around at a table, I go to dinner with somebody and they start bringing up race and, uh, I mean, from a liberal or an other side of it, I'm like, hey, I'm done. I'm not discussing it, and, and I'm not saying I'm some great goody tissue, but as you said, these issues, they took real evils, magnified them, set up a whole system around that uh, with guilt when it has nothing to do with it, and now they've replaced it with all these new despotisms, all these new oppressions, and they're just using it as this hot button issue where I don't care what color you are, people are paralyzed by it. And then actually don't mingle with people that look or act different because they're all so scared. And then, as you said, they can all then be controlled by their little local racial capo who then interfaces with the foundations and the government. And if any of those capos or chiefs ever get off the reservation, their money's cut off, they're targeted. But I think what you got at, you were attacked at first, but then when you fought back and didn't back off, then you got more support and the system backed off. And that's what I've experienced. When we have the facts, when we have the truth, when people are hungry for it now, when real revolution is in the air, a, a, a revolution of ideas, we're selling ideas that no army can stop. I mean, as Victor Hugo said, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. And that time has come. And I don't think the establishment can put this thing back together again, Professor. They cannot. The truth, uh, writing, uh, research, info wars, this will win the day for us. Uh, but in addition to that, it doesn't hurt if you lawyer up as well. And I, I engaged the service as one of the best. He's Mr. Dan Siegel. He's a civil rights attorney in Oakland, California. He has uh, whipped the UC any number of times. And in my situation, he's going to hand them their butt. So I, it also takes the threat of a, a nice butt kicking, too. Well, good job. Intellect. Good Thank job. You. I'm glad you're Thank able to continue with your free speech. Because when you Great. study real globalist publications, it's all conspiracy. I mean, it's not even really. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, mainline history books, it's in there. It's just that the students aren't given any of this. They're not. Uh, there's uh, just a sort of an inculcated linkage blindness, as uh, I would call it. There, uh, a lot of it is, has to do with the fact that uh, most professors stop growing after they receive tenure. They think that they're that they're over the hump there. Uh, but they're going to start uh, waking up really quickly when they learn, through my efforts and other people's, that our uh, pension funds and our retirement and our investment funds are, are, are going to be systematically looted. And by the way, the University of California, this is a warning to other institutions, public uh, institutions or not. Uh, it seems like they're going for the so-called sustainability economy. So they've hitched their investment wagon to the gore and blood Team, blood and core investment team, uh, sustainability, uh, weather change, Agenda 21 is your uh, 
as you alluded to earlier, because most people at, uni at universities are sort of hippy dippy. They want to drive a Prius and wear Birkenstocks and have a ponytail. And that economy well, bankrupted Spain, so they've got to know absolutely. they're hitched to a loser. But, yeah. And it's meant to lose. It's meant, They don't want a real sustainable economy. No. They want the sexy uh, austerity. I go to Whole Foods and half the magazines <laughs> are, it's great to be poor now. It's so right. cool. But then, meanwhile, Obama's flying around Air Force One telling Africans they can't have cars or air conditioners. I yes. mean, why not say you can have clean cars and clean air conditioners? I mean, it's just, they're teaching us it's not good to progress as a new dark age to stop the renaissance that threatens the monopoly of power. We're going to do two, uh, two quick segments before Billy Great. Corrigan joins us with phone calls straight ahead. Pete, Eddie, Terrific. Julio, Frank, Dr. Kelly, and others, your calls are straight ahead. On the other side of this break, I'm Alex Jones, PrisonPlanet.tv. Maryland, you're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Oh, hey, it's an honor to speak with you, gentlemen. Um, yeah, um, Dr. Yamamoto, do you, do you foresee any um, top elitists, like, having a change of heart and, um, and like, becoming whistleblowers, or do, are they too entrenched in their divide and cock the mindset? Uh, I don't think anybody... Uh, uh, is is free of the possibility of, of conversion or coming to their senses. The uh, the story of Saul of Tarsus is quite instructive, right? As Alex mentioned earlier, he was basically a thug, a brute, an enforcer for the Pharisees, and uh, he had a, a a radical change of heart and spirit and mind. So yes, it's possible and. I'll go a little bit further than that. I, I uh, foresee uh, larger and larger numbers of defections from people as they feel uh, their own self-interest being threatened. You're absolutely right. And, and look, it's easy to cheat. It's easy to divide people. That's why so many cultures do it. There's always going to be some element of manipulation. Nobody's perfect. But we're, mm -hmm. we're into a decadent cycle right now where it's so intense, and they're using high-tech media systems to do it, and it's so toxic to everybody. We have to have a cultural awakening to these tactics and then reject them, just like we rejected GMO or non-organic, and it will start new economies of truth, new economies of being honorable. A, a, a re-entry of the age of chivalry, but 2.0. Thank you, Pete. Great question. Eddie in Illinois, you're on the air with Professor Hamamoto. Yeah, how you doing, Alex? Good, brother. I just want to say real quick that uh, I'm in the middle of a uh, change in my life, and uh, I have a question. I uh, bought the uh, DNA force and oxy powder. I uh, lost my job. Uh, 816-820-57. Hold, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second, brother. We can't give phone numbers out on air, but I, I appreciate that because somebody could call in with somebody else's number as a form of harassment. And I'm not saying you're doing that, but we can't give phone numbers out. Sometimes we can give out 1-800 numbers if because you know, if, if it's a known number, but that's a tactic. Sometimes people call in to talk radio and give out, say, their ex-wife's phone number. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I just want to say I am uh, in this uh, seat in the season of uh, giving, you know, uh, in uh, Illinois, they're saying you can't film the cops. It's going to be a uh, felony. Uh, I'm getting ready to be evicted. I'm a very good person. I'm just wondering how I can, you know, I pray to God. Now, I hear you, brother. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. You know, you could give out your email if you wanted people to contact you locally and have them work with you. What's your email? Well, he's gone. You know, you're going to see that as the economy collapses and more and more people can't get a job and, and, and are kicked off their unemployment. You're going to see more of that desperation. We have 50 million people roughly on food stamps. Imagine 50 million people a day lined up at soup kitchens. That would really expose what this economy has been converted to, Professor. Absolutely. And those numbers are rising. Uh, they're beginning to uh, affect the middle class. And uh, with the uh, lowering of... Uh, of immigration barriers, you're going to see a lot of professionals in the IT business and computer science and engineering uh, affected by uh, foreign workers that people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates want to have and uh, bring in to take their jobs away. And then that yeah. gets rid of one of the only first world countries, which then there's no point for the third world to run here. It's a giant sinking to giant race to the bottom. As Ross Absolutely. Perot warned us, we'll be back in 70 seconds and we'll talk to Frank, Dr. Kelly, Edward and others. Stay with us. Uh, we're taking phone calls right now. We're going to go to Frank in North Carolina. You're on the air with Professor Hamamoto. Go ahead, Frank. 
Yes, uh, Professor, I just wanted to lay out a quick tenure observation, and then I uh, really value your opinion. I'd like to ask you a question. I'm sure you'll have a good, interesting response. But I figure you're probably more intelligent, more informed than 99% of the people I come into contact with in any given year uh, here in my area of the country. Now, I keep seeing these headlines of the CIA justifying torture based on the 9-11 attacks, and I hear all these people calling into all these talk shows in my area, mostly saying that they agree with a policy of torture because of 9-11 and all that. Now, I know uh, that 9-11 was, uh, I guess just for, for the purposes of brevity here, uh, uh, an inside job. Uh, and I hear from people, insiders like Dr. Steve Pachinik, that, over, that, that, that say that overwhelmingly the American people do not believe the official story of the 9-11 attacks. And I just keep wondering, uh, for, I've been away for 10 years, where are all these people? You're listening to niche fake right-wing radio where people just regurgitate talking points, the same cult as Democrats do. And so that's why you have pockets of this in many areas of the country as you have pockets that are really awake. I'd say 30% are really wise to what's going on. Another 20% knows something. And about half the public just doesn't care. But still, that type of percentage is huge. Um, let's get the professor's take on that. I'm skeptical of the numbers that are being produced there, but uh, supposedly the majority of American people being in favor of torture. Um, I was perhaps trying to attribute this this hype to these trolls that uh, that call into these programs. You notice uh, these individuals who are pro torture do not call into the Alex Jones show. Uh, I don't hear them uh, calling into uh, Savage Nation. Uh, there are all these small, really uh, local television and uh, radio programs that uh, that court the, this very small constituency and it, it's still very difficult for me to to wrap my mind around any notion that, that most americans who are good and moral individuals by and large uh, would accept the abuse the humiliation the torture of human beings i think most of them are are like uh, joe biggs who quite um, poignantly talked about the uh, screams, and then the weeping, and then the silence that followed, and that progression, uh, that's deeply affecting to most human beings, but perhaps I'm underestimating. Well, sure, and plus intellectually, it destroys the judicial system. You can't believe any confessions anymore if torture's no. going on. I mean, Absolutely, it, it completely, and perhaps that's why, why the torture regime has been put in place, is to... Uh, produce rot from the inside out and from the top down. Well, sure, plus there's the schizophrenic hypocrisy where anybody else that ever tortures bad. North Korea's bad, or Nazi Germany's bad, or, you know, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, but, oh my gosh, when we do it, it's good. Now, let's let's uh, stick to the moral high ground. You can't go wrong by, by just doing what's right and what's moral and what's just. You're right, though. It is an attempt to infect us with corruption. Absolutely. This is part of the destruction of the culture. This is psyops. This is uh, programming of the highest sort, appealing to the basis, uh, basis aspect of human nature. Well, Professor, we, yes. I have to plead ignorance, and I apologize. I did not know you had a new book out. I'm going to read it as soon as I, it comes in, oh. and as soon as that happens, I want to get you on for a full hour to go chapter by chapter through how you've put this into a scholarly dissertation on the subject. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much, Alex, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Oh, I meant to ask you about that, but we're out of time. College is <laughs> banning Christmas. I mean, it's just amazing. All right, drop out. All right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll talk to Thank Professor you. again soon. Billy All Corgan right. coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. That was Professor Daryl Hamamoto.